The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. OK, so we were looking at vector fields. And last time, So last time we saw that if a vector field happens to be a gradient field, then the line integral can be computed actually by taking the change in value of a potential between the end point and the starting point of the curve. Okay, so if we have a curve C from a point P0 to a point P1, then the line integral for work depends only on the end points and not on the actual path we chose. So we say that the line integral is path independent. Okay, and we also said that the vector field is conservative because of conservation of energy, which tells you if you start at a point and you come back to the same point, then you haven't gotten any work out of that force. So If we have a closed curve, then the line integral for work is just zero. And basically, we say that these properties are equivalent to being a gradient field or being path independent or being conservative. And what I promised to you is that today we would see a criterion to decide whether a vector field is a gradient field or not and how to find the potential function if it is a gradient field. Okay, so that's the topic for today. So, the question is testing whether a given vector field, let's say M and N components, is a gradient field. So, for that, well, let's start with an observation. Okay, so say that it is a gradient field. So, that means that the first component of the field is just the partial of f with respect to some to the variable x, and the second component is the partial of f with respect to y. And now we have seen an interesting property of the second partial derivatives of a function, which is if you take the partial derivative first with respect to x, then with respect to y, or first with respect to y, then with respect to x, you get the same thing. So we know f sub x, y equals f sub y, x, and that means m sub y equals n sub x. Okay, so if you have a gradient field, then it should have this property. You take the y component, take the derivative with respect to x, take the x component, differentiate with respect to y, you should get the same answer. And that's important to know, so I'm going to put that in a box. Um, it's a broken box, but okay. And so the claim that I want to make is that there's a converse of sorts. This is actually basically all we need to check. Okay, so sorry. Uh, what's going on? 
Okay. <laughs> okay, so conversely, if, so I'm going to put here a condition and my equals nx, then f is a gradient field. So what's the condition that I need to put here? Well, we'll see a more precise version of that next week, but um, for now, let's just say if our vector field is defined and differentiable everywhere, in the plane. Okay, so we need actually a vector field that's well defined everywhere. You're not allowed to have somehow places where it's not well defined. Uh, otherwise, actually, you have a counterexample on your problem set this week. If you look at the last problem on the problem set this week, it gives you a vector field that satisfies this condition everywhere where it's defined, but actually there's a point where it's not defined and that causes it actually to somehow, I mean, everything that I'm going to say today breaks down for that example because of that. Um, so, I mean, we'll shed more light on this a bit later with the notion of simply connected regions and so on. But um, for now, let's just say if it's defined everywhere and it satisfies this criterion, then it's a gradient field. So if you ignore, I mean, you know, if you ignore that technical condition, being a gradient field means essentially the same thing as having this property. So that's what we need to check. Okay, so let's look at an example Well, one vector field that we've been looking at a lot was minus yi plus xj. Remember that was the vector field that looked like rotation at unit speed. Okay, so I think last time we already decided that this guy should not be allowed to be a gradient field and should not be conservative because if we integrate on the unit circle, then we'll get a positive answer. But let's check that Indeed, it fails our test. So, well, let's call this guy M. Let's, ca let's call this guy N. Then if you look at partial M, partial Y, well, that's going to be a negative one. If you take partial N, partial X, that's going to be one, and these are not the same. So, indeed, this is not a gradient field. <coughs> 